since this is GQ, I usually don't pop but I'm gonna pop a little today. If we set the trend and say, yo, we're giving you free work, us. Us three right here. That's why the people love us. Yeah, yeah, what's up, y'all? You know who it is, L-O-X. What up? Shake Luke, Jada Kiss, Sounds <laughs> Peace. Yeah. Right now, we're about to take y'all through some of our iconic tracks. Yeah. Y'all ready? Let's go. Only time to tell how the clock tick. I really love hair, but I'm still a hostage. Rest in peace to the dog, first of all. We love you, X, forever. Yeah, but working with X is always, you know, the energy's up. A lot of good vibes, a lot of good flowers in the air. You know what I mean? And he actually bought us the Rough Riders, and we got the deal on Bad Boy first. It was only right to put him on the first big single. Big record. This is a beat that I can freak. Just drop the rails. Bless it with the L. X was a superstar to us. Already. Yeah, already. He Man. was already a star. He come through with a Luther tape with no Luther songs on it, Man. write his name on a Sharpie, and sell them joints for $25, Incredible. $30, $50 back then. After That's... them five songs go off, Luther come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hunger. I think anybody who ever seen him perform or rap at the time knew he was bound to be a superstar. Absolutely. He possessed the energy that was unmatched. The dog thing is not just a gimmick or a promo. The man is a dog, God bless his soul. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's what he embodies. What I remember about Money, Power, Respect, you know, we was new on Bad Boy. We was new in the game. We was a little scared to ask Kim to get on the hook. She was a little busy at the time, but it was able to happen. Money, Power, Respect, what you need life. Money, Power, Respect, what you eating right. Be honest, in the studio that day, it was a surreal session. Like, we, we're from Yonkers, New York. We're on Bad Boy, basically the Chicago Bulls of rap. We got our brother X with us. We're repping Yonkers. We got Kim in the next room. We're making a hook and playing with the hook. Money, power, respect. You know, that's a staple term in hip hop that's now, why, too. That's like, why we that's named it our first album. I think even for new artists who don't even know who we are, they know the term money, power, respect. And that's from, that's what we were striving for. We gon' make it, we gon' make it. We got a pack of beats from Alchemist. Or There's some controversy with the beat too. He yeah, he did. Somebody I actually it. paid for it. I think he gave it to Raskas first. What I think happened was miscommunication. I don't think the business was handled on his side or because I don't know how you could sell a beat twice. Once we heard it and once I loved it, I did the agreement right away to lock the beat in. So I think Rask was pissed off a little at first, but it should have been with Al. It shouldn't have been with me. And I ain't, I'm not a producer, I just heard it and bought it. You say that they me wild when you in the Cayman Islands on a yacht with our favorite albums. Why she came on it, man? There you go. I came from the block. They was in the studio. <laughs> I swear they was in Rough Rider studio working on it. I was like, what y'all doing? I heard that, so I said, fire. And I think I left. I swear to God, right back up to the hood. Definitely. It was yeah, it probably really, went just like that. Just like that. I miss Mariah, Mary, Patty <laughs> LaBelle. I miss anybody you can Patty name. LaBelle. It's so crazy and didn't take it as serious like <laughs> getting on that record until like later when it blows up, you're like, man, I want you know, I should have been on that. Instead of hanging outside chilling or doing whatever. So that's how that went. The back and forth, the in and out. What made y'all do that? How do y'all write it? What's the process like? We started from just admiring all of those before us. Yeah. EPMD. MOP, run DMC. It's an art, it's part of the art. Like, you know, MCing is a craftsmanship, especially EPMD, the timing of the in and out and Slick Rick and Doug too. Shit, Nas and AZ. It's kind of a nerdy thing, I guess. You to used be able to use to, two mics. Yeah, and to be able to say, learning how to say this the word. space and fill it in. You write it together and learn it, then you gotta lay it with the spaces in there. Yeah. So can you imagine doing the whole version you gotta do two, leave out four, dude. Mm -hmm. And then the timing has to be very precise, so it's always been a dope hip hop thing to do. It's showing our ass, man. We got good fucking timing, man. Tell me if you know someone that needs. The one we own is 11 minutes long. Yeah, that's crazy. Kanye is the hardest. <laughs> he got 11 minute song. One a few of them. He basically made a triple album. 11 minute song is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Your whole treadmill with one of them Every songs. <laughs> Ready <laughs> or heard. You could lose 12 pounds playing this album. One song. Yeah. The one thing you got to do say is he ain't following nobody's fucking nah, template. Absolutely not. That's, that's a why fucking, I love. That's, that's why I think he's incredible. Fucking be different. There's a lot of shit I don't like, but if it's fucking different and you 
follows yourself. Fuck it, man. Get your money, man. Like five people hit me and said that, yeah, he was going to call me. Then he finally texted me, congratulated us from Versus and said he wanted to work with us. Was we willing to come to Atlanta that night? I told him, yeah, send a jet. He actually sent it. We went, we flew to the Falcon Stadium. They played us a few cuts off Donda. And they played us Jesus Lord. They said that's the song they wanted us on. We got some accessories that we needed. I got a few pots of coffee brewed up and we knocked it out. We left at seven in the morning. Went to the hotel, showered up, ate some lunch, went back to the arena to the listening party. Tell him the Missy part, Luke. <laughs> she was already in the studio when we walked in. Yeah, he was working on something else with her. Yeah, and Puff said, yo, I got, I, I got to hear something. He turned the beat on, and she was just like, yo, let me hear y'all rap. Let me hear something. She asked all of us to rap, and that's when she heard the lyrics. And then she, when it was done, she was like, yo, and y'all going to write Puff verse. We didn't even know who she was. She just turned around and started dancing and doing the beatbox and stuff. I'm like, yo, we thought he was making us keep that track. We didn't like that. Be that first. Like, yo, this is y'all's. The verse Diddy has for All About the Benjamins, we was actually having a writing session in Locks in the MIDI room one day. I was rhyming that verse, and he came in and said, I want that. And I said, you got to have it. And he used it. But don't knock me for trying to bury seven zeros over in Rio de Janeiro. The rock version. Whose decision was that? That's Puff. Yeah, That's all Puff. Puff. All About the Benjamins, what? I get a 50 cow for the mutts. Oh. Who else comes in the game has their first song with Biggie and he's going at you when you just <laughs> came from Yankees? I think Big was the one who put the battery in our back for real, for real. Like once we was able to meet him and the way he embraced us and kept yeah. telling us that he loved us and he was happy we was down with him and when he heard us rhyme and he was like. Fuck y'all rhyme rhyme. You know? It's an honor. It's an honor. Gangsters don't die, they get chubby and move to Miami. Shit is deep now, dog, but it gets deeper. We was out touring doing spot dates, but we got the call that, you know, Jay wanted us to come to the studio to get on his album. They called as soon as we got from baggage claim. Like we standing on the curb ready to get in the car service. And we like, yeah, nah, we can do the song. Let us go home, drop the luggage. They like, nah, we need you to go right now. <sighs> We made this collective decision that, you know, we're going to go straight there. I think Siegel was there. Siegel was there. Beans was there. Hove made Beans rhyme for us until his mouth got dry. Then he pulled up the beat and yeah. we laid Reservoir Dogs right there. That is my verse for that night. I don't remember yeah, that. They had yeah, to go, they had to go to a club or something, so P had to come back the next day and actually lay his verse. And I laid my verse. And I come out, Hov's like, oh, I hear you, baby. You was at us, huh? Yeah, back in the day, Hov used to like remix your drink. Hey, you, ain't, you ain't the only one who noticed that. Like, what was that like, that situation? You really got to ask him what he was doing, but I mean, it was obvious to a duck. I used to mean? think Stout was doing that. Yeah, like making Steve that Stout hey. was very involved mm -hmm. in that because he had called like me it. for the original, call him for the remix. And he loves that kind of Call him for the original, yeah. call me for the remix. So. And you know what I kind of think? That was him being smart doing what we did. Make sure you, while you going corporate, you're paying attention to what's going down downstairs mm -hmm. and cover your bases. What was the rivalry like with um, State Property? I would say when that was a very intense time. Yeah, that was different. That, that, was, that different was a different now. time. And we were younger men. We were all immature, coming from the concrete jungle. Yeah, we was in the hip hop industry with a lot of dudes was coming fresh off of street life. We had hung out with each other as Rough Riders and Rockefeller, a lot of kind of studio sessions. We built some sort of camaraderie. So I guess when it started, it was a little weird. It was weird and offensive. More than the, your music side, you're, you know, your street side start kicking and you start thinking other shit. I was only in it because you talking to him, you talking to me. It was like that. You swung on him, you might as well have swung yeah. on me and that's traditional sure style too. Man. Yeah, ride out, but I ain't got no money. I'm losing weight. Huh? The golden era is some I think the time of maybe probably the illest lyricist that ever lived. Right or wrong? Yeah. Go back through the dates, go through the history, go look. Who the fuck did as much mixtape work? as we did. We always been the people's group to say, hey, all right, we do this other shit on the side, but we're the guys you'll actually see outside. We the actual guys who put out mixtapes per week. Even when we was on Bad Boy, when everything was doing great, we, we was doing great underground. Yeah. We was making our bones over there. So they, they knew us from that. We basically created the mixtape lane. No artist really lived off it until they seen what we did and how we did it. Then you seen 
50 murder it, 2 Chains murder it, Lil Wayne murder it. It became a thing to do because we figured out, all right, we can't get on the radio or get no singles out. You gotta find a way to be alive. So we was used to putting out consistent work and feeding our fans for free. Like we literally made up, hey, all right, we get paid off of this, we do this, but we love this shit. We respect who came before us. We'll lay some ill shit and throw that shit out for free. If you hope we wouldn't make it, fuck you. Talk with a heart full of hatred, fuck you. That whole album, you know, we was just happy to be on Rough Riders. We knew Swiss before he made mm -hmm. one beat. Yeah. All for the love is his first placement. And then Rough Riders anthem and all of that. We used to be running around. Mm -hmm. Back and forth out of town, and um, Swiss would call me like, yo, convince my uncle to buy me a keyboard, man. Beat machine, a beat yeah. machine and stuff like that, yeah. We denied a trillion Swiss beats before we accepted one. We knew him when he was still learning, figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the uh, Let the Locks Go campaign? We knew we couldn't beat Puff lawyer-wise or money-wise, so we had to play mental chess, figure out what was our assets, and our assets were the people. Before we did it, we knew that it was a chance that this might be a bad thing, but this is our only way to do it, and if we're gonna do it, let's so do bad. it. We started the whole campaign at some at a big concert in New York. <laughs> yeah, that so was crazy. <laughs> had the t-shirts. We had the whole arena saying that shit. Yeah. Why was this our last lockdown for 16 years? We put out the Trinity series. Yeah, no, 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 but people seem to think like we got back together. And we, we own a studio together. We see each other a few times a week for all of them years. Just everybody started doing solo things and opening up businesses and doing that. And, mm -hmm. and we and ownership. never got around to a it. A big part of yeah. it was really ownership and what we could what we could get out of it. It didn't make no sense for us to do something that we had a problem with and not be able to make, if we wanted to reap start the benefits of it. We wanted to be ourselves. Work, work for ourselves. Shout like, out to Puff. We got yeah. our catalog back. Yeah, love is love. Entire catalog. Our relationship with Diddy is solid. We good. Catalog back. Thank the Lord. J-A-D-A. Top five dead or alive and that's just off one LP. He went up to the radio to do an interview with Greenland. Mm -hmm. He asked us to freestyle, and we did that. But the, that stayed in our head because we played uh, Pop on the football. Yes. That would be a song that we would sing going to away games on the bus. Then Green produced it and made a real song and happened to be a nice call and response hook that the crowd always respond. You can throw it on to this day, they Crazy. gonna sing the rest. Everywhere we go, people wanna know uh -huh. who we are. Yeah. So we tell them. In the 90s, we had a reputation, one, because we was from Yonkers, everybody was from all the boroughs. We didn't do security, but we didn't let nobody D-block us. We ain't let nobody D-block us, so we, we'll, we'll come through and it'll be a problem and we'll work it out ourselves. And it means discipline, dedication, and determination. Oh, That's what the D stand for. Top off that I love, book on LP, that line is like iconic. Did you know that was going to be a thing? Like, nah, I just rhymed with the, the, the thing before that. <laughs> you got some balls to say that. Yeah, you gotta, it, takes a, it takes a lot of gumption, as he was saying. Mm -hmm. they, Big they, they, they say you never dropped a bad verse, like you never laid a bad verse. Uh, yeah, that's cool. You know, when people say it, nobody be like, get the hell out of here. Or, you know, I know a few rappers, they say they top anything. You go hear a bunch of busted ties after that. <laughs> How do y'all figure out whose verses go in what order? Pretty Whatever much. they bring to the table, and that's it. Really go yeah. how, it really yeah. go how we lay it, unless yeah. one of them just soup out standing yeah. and the shit go in. It's like, always whoever lays it, and then less, like he said, unless sometimes it's like, that would sound better first. Like, like if I'm on the hook, I probably won't go first. I probably move go down somewhere else. Yeah. 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 yeah, you don't even want the last matter. verse. You want to go for, You want to get on as quick as you can get on because <laughs> yeah. they only playing 37 yeah. seconds of it. And we're always openly competitive. I'm never getting in the studio as I expect them to, and want them to have the better verse. But when right, they right. do have the better verse, I'm I'm not mad. I'm glad because it's still we're one. Exercise that ego and pride with the competition, not your brothers. You want to keep that shit in-house, discuss whatever y'all got to discuss behind doors, get mad, yell, scream, but that ain't for everybody to know. And from Social media the, be you know, people, Twitter man. and Instagram. Yeah. Man. That's that bullshit. You already love that, man. Y'all ain't been broke together. Y'all ain't really shared. Y'all was lying to each other mm -hmm. from the beginning. One of y'all was bitch ass. Part of my French. Yeah. It helps more. that we was a group way before social media. That's weird to us. Yeah. Instead of calling each other, having a meeting. And you see what I posted about you? Call me back after you look <laughs> on Facebook. That's so yeah. weird. <laughs> What 
the legacy of the locks. Airtight brother Loyalty. Shit. Yeah, loyalty. The only rap group, I think, besides De La Soul and M.O.P. who didn't break up. No qualms. We showed y'all what loyalty is. We showed y'all what brotherhood is. We showed y'all what a code is. We showed y'all what growth is. We showed y'all that we care for the hood. And then we showed y'all that we even want to give back and keep the hood healthy. We got the key to our city. We deal with the mayor, the police, the criminals, the ambulance, the firemen, the mothers, the fathers, the, schools, the children, hospitals, the schools, the churches, hospital. My legacy is we gave a damn and we gave back and we always been a hundred and million percent hip hop. And we, some, yeah, and we and were some of the nicest that ever do. Stand up guys too. We like full time yeah. dads and all that. Like, yeah. Current state of hip hop? I like Big 42, yeah. I like yeah. Lil Baby, I like, like, I like a lot of the music, but it's the craftsmanship. I think they're giving so much money to some of these young dudes Sash. that they're getting far away from craftsmanship as possible. All we want to see is that continue to be here. Some more Ask some young it. dudes reach that. out after yeah. verses like, yo, I want to <clears> change <throat> my show, kiss. I want to rhyme the yeah, words, I don't want to go over the... So that touched me more than anything. And yeah, not only that, it. like you can't be the older dude who don't want to see younger brown black kings and queens make more money. That's what you were supposed to That's be That's how it's for. supposed to go. It's Absolutely. supposed to be like your generation is supposed to set the path for the next generation to make more money. Like Kid said, as long as somebody, we got Kendricks, we got Coles, we got mm -hmm. all of these young gentlemen to keep the craftsmanship, so it's in a good space. You know who it is, your boys, the LOS. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. P, J, yeah. the Kid, Sheik, Looch, Q, yeah. thanks for having us. Thank you. Very iconic. Salute, I'm done happy we did GQ. This is crazy.